All right. <laughs> Welcome to the whiskey ball. So it's day two of Graham Horner. See? Graham Horner, you magnificent-ish bastard. <laughs> <laughs> This is the thing it was like, Rex, how much are you anticipating the horrors that Daniel's about to unleash upon you? We'll call him Graham Horrors. <laughs> Horners. <laughs> Horrors. <laughs> All right, this is Bella's. Yes, yes. This is an American blended whiskey. The one thing I can say about these guys, I think the whiskey's, I think it's being made by Willet. Okay. But again, no idea. It's Kentucky based. Just, uh, just a guess. Although it's actually the company, Bella's company is St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. But I think they're, anyway. I don't know who it is, but it's American blended whiskey. Okay. And the thing that I do like about it Jeez. is transparency. Oh, right on. Look at this. Right here on the bottle, 80% grain vodka, right? 20% mm -hmm. straight whiskey. So mostly vodka. Mostly vodka. Isn't that kind of like the uh, the Kessler? Yeah. Mostly vodka? Yeah, yeah. It's, this is effectively Kessler. Okay. But with transparent labeling. Okay. Once it, well, hold on. I'm trying to acclimate my brain to cheap alcohol, yeah, and I'm finding like kind of some nice notes. That's the curve that we're grading on. Yeah, and for, you know, budget definitely reminds me of that aged vodka that we were smelling on our episode. Yeah, there, there's what well, is centering in that. It's like a it's van, the vanilla note is that main dominant note you're talking. Yeah. about. Yeah. What happens uh, if you age vodka like into whiskey? Tannin. Bro? No. Uh, the vodka is there, but the density and the saturation and the heft of those notes no. is not there. It's not concentrated. Because uh, maybe the proof is going to be, it has to be at 40%, yeah. I wonder if there is a whiskey in a plastic bottle that's not 80 proof. I doubt it. Yeah. That would be an interesting series of choices. Cask strength, <laughs> plastic bottle. Just burning through <laughs> just, the plastic. Yeah, eats through it. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, it's a, it's a frost, vanilla frosting. It's like a thin vanilla frosting on the nose. Oh, and this tastes like v cream cheese frosting on red velvet cake. Oh, yeah. And a little bit of an oak layer. A thin oak layer in the back. Super, super thin. Thin oak layer right underneath that. Nah. You Ooh. know what this reminds me of? Oh, it's got a, with the finish, though. Mm. I get, like, um, cough syrup finish. That's fair. Oh. Yeah, just alcoholic kind of vibe. You know what this reminds me of? Regret. <laughs> no, it reminds me of Dunville Irish uh, whiskey that I think we should try right now. What? Is this an elaborate ruse so you can pour something that's not mostly vodka? Speaking of Bellas, have you tried Dunville PX Irish whiskey? Oh, you're whiskey? way off, Dan. You're oh yeah, totally. Off. You're, you're right. right. You poured it, you might as well just finish it. Oh no, they're nothing alike. Yeah, you, you, you misremembered. It's fine though. All right, well, just... <sighs> oh yeah, I like this one. Can I just, can I just not even? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm being again. But the, the fact that it's 80% vodka, you can tell. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, the, the notes that are there, it's the presentation of vanilla, mm -hmm. which is pro I like vanilla in my whiskey, uh, but it's probably my least favorite kind of vanilla note in whiskey. That artificial, you say like a cream cheese vanilla frosting, yeah, but I, say like a, I say like a vanilla frosting with a metallic note in there. You ever see those cupcakes with the silver sugar beads? Yeah. To me, this is what those silver sugar beads should taste like. They never do, you can barely taste them when you bite into yeah, them. Yeah, and then on the nose, it's just so bright and, and ethanol -y yeah and and just oh, there's no there's no body oh. there's no depth there's no heft but the dunville i mean just to confirm that you're not you're not onto something here oh no way off yeah finding, i misjudged that one entirely it on not finding it on the nose now let's, let's try it on the palate well, that's though. the value of ab comparisons really because mm -hmm. that's how we learn yeah that's the more you know the more you know oh that's slightly almost rubber phenolic note on the tail. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And you know what? I get like a, a little bit of a beer note in mm -hmm. this. It's hefty. Yeah. I love that. And I love that label. Yes, yeah, nice label. It's good. It's a good label. All right. All right. Anyway. Beer, it's like a beery finish too on the Dunville. Mm-hmm. On the Dunville. Going back, the AB. Let's see if it unlocked any notes on the Bellows. Uh, nope. 
Lizard Crimson question. How do you guys clean your Glen Cairns in a dishwasher? <laughs> Uh, wah, wah. I've had this consistent problem where I get these minerally notes when nosing my whiskey. It's the same on every whiskey and mm -hmm. ruins the experience for me. I've concluded that it's coming from either unrinsed soap, impurities from the drops of water I put in it, right. or impurities in the glass itself. Yes. Uh, I've tried rinsing my glasses with tap water best I can. I don't really want to go out and buy distilled water every time I drink and pouring neat only, but I still occasionally get those annoying non-whiskey notes. It goes away after a while, but it's annoying to have on the first note. So this is a little awkward because uh, we don't really plug merch stuff on the whiskey tribe right dot com. Um, so there's I mean in terms of cleaning a clean Yeah, well that's not what he's talking about though, so we don't need to worry about the overlap. No, but I'm saying if you're trying to get all the stuff out of the whiskey. He's talking about the rinse. I'm saying that if you want to get all the stuff out of the whiskey. Yeah, there's a tool for that. And and in terms of or you can check for more information about the possibilities of that tool. You can check out whiskeytribe.com. If you're curious about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but uh, just the rinse. Yeah. So you can use tap water. Here's the trick that we found at the distillery. You have to, and actually at the tower, you have to dry them. So uh, you can't let them air dry because the residual water evaporates and leaves behind the things that cause the smell and taste. Yeah. yeah. So you, the only extra step you need to add is do a tap water rinse yeah. to get any soap residue out, yep. shake it out, and then hand dry them, and that will get rid of almost everything. And careful with microfiber. Your, careful with your fingers in there because if you get too much finger meat crammed in the glass, it can oh, yeah. break. It will. See this right uh, here? Yeah. That scar that dropped my nickel right They're here? The only people that really care. Yeah. Show that, show that. There you go. See? It's hard to see. There it is. Anyway, I was cleaning a wine glass that way. Mm -hmm. I was talking to somebody. I went, crack, yep. and I went, huh, and I looked down, and this whole chunk of my knuckle had flipped backwards, and on one side, I could see the white of the ligament, and on the other side, I could see the pulsing vein right there, like just completely visible, and I was like, huh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> so I put the flap back to cover it up, <laughs> and, and I put a Band-Aid on it. It bled for two hours, so I went to the doctor, and then I had to get five stitches. That's, children, why you don't put your fingers inside of a Glencairn aggressively, right? right? Yeah. Maybe put a little cloth and stuff it in there and then just kind of yeah. twist it around. And, and maybe there's an amazing cleaning tool that I wouldn't know where to look for that. Yeah, who knows? Uh, save your finger meat if you're into that kind of thing. Some people <laughs> are pretty haphazard with their finger meat. That's I fair. personally am fond of my finger meat. Yeah, me too. Yeah. We go way back. <laughs> Ryan Butler. It's like potpourri, but it's not dry, it's wet. Way to speak to the core demographic of your audience in terms of they can understand. <laughs> you don't have wet potpourri, bro? Jeez. This guy coming at me? You're not even living. Doesn't even have the wet potpourri? What are you, hanging out with your roommates in your fraternity oh, room? That's house? embarrassing. Fraternity house? That's embarrassing, right? And and maybe you're single. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> you invite one of them sweet, sweet honeys to you your You need home. some potpourri. First question. Say, hey, I can, you got some potpourri in the air. Is it wet potpourri? Yeah, or is it dry Because if it's not wet potpourri, it's useless. they're out. That's pathetic. God. Yeah. Freaking guys. <laughs> uh, I like the Dunville. Me too. Right? Here's to fire <laughs> when you're drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal when you steal your livers. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us. <laughs>